Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On the Couch with Kush. Just kidding. <laughs> I just made that up. But actually, you know what? It might just be a thing. Um, you know, I am actually having my morning coffee and I was just thinking that, you know, um, maybe I should start a series uh, where we just, you know, talk about stuff. So today's topic is on how I made the transition from doing a PhD in protein biochemistry to data science. So basically what I did was I approached a bunch of people um, just because I needed to kind of figure out what I could do with the skill set that I acquired during 11 years of my studies. So, you know, um, for example, in the corporate world, there's very like a limited number of positions that you could kind of get into. And in South Africa in particular, I noticed that you wouldn't be able to do a job unless you studied that particular in that particular field. So, for example, if I wanted to go into corporate, having had a pay or having obtained a PhD, it was going to be very very difficult unless I worked in a pharmaceutical company or um, like a medical scientific company that kind of that kind of vibe, you know. Um, but it was very, very difficult to make the transition into corp into the corporate world, um, and I, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so most people, you know, after doing a PhD, because they're so passionate about it, um, they go on to do a postdoc and then um, go into science, uh, scientific research or medical research. And for me, I was at the stage where, um, you know, it was just too much, and when you do a master's, a challenging master's project back to back with a challenging and even more challenging PhD project, um, it then becomes very, very overwhelming and you, you actually get to a point where you become exhausted and you become saturated with the field. You just, you just feel like you've had enough. And for me, I just wanted something that was completely different. Now, my personality is so that such that I love learning new things. So as you guys know with my YouTube channel and that sort of thing, I learned to do makeup. I watched a lot of YouTube videos before I learned to do makeup on myself and makeup on other people. Um, and that was like, you know, um, the start of something that was kind of, um, it was the start of me realizing what my strengths or where my strengths lie and that is in learning so after doing a, a protein biochemistry after studying for 11 or 12 years of my life um, with four degrees under my belt uh, in a particular field I decided that I wasn't done with learning I just didn't want to stay in that particular field I wanted to learn something completely new and I spoke to a bunch of people and I decided that, um, okay, so actually how it happened was, I approached a bunch of people about what kind of careers I could get into, into the corporate world. And this was my final year of my PhD. I even had a mentor who is a CEO of a very, very large company, I'm not going to mention any. Um, I met with her and had a very interesting conversation with her. And, it's, and, and I just like to say that you know it's so important to actually have a mentor because then you have direction. And she put me in touch um, with a lot of different people and that's how you build a network. So I got in touch with those people, I met with those people, I had explore, exploratory chats with those people. And kind of um, data science kind of came up because I was interested in going into, like more towards the computer science field because in my honors year I had done Python programming and um, I wanted to use some of those skills you know in, in, in the corporate world in the real world so I I then spoke to someone who, to, who um, advised me to do a data science course online uh, and so I started it and I found it quite interesting. Um, needless to say, I entered the corporate world as a medical sales rep while doing this data science course. Um, obviously it wasn't for me, 
I just needed a job at the time because I obviously had left university and I finished like my thesis. I was uh, I was in the process of um, having it reviewed by my supervisor, and then you know um, gonna, I was going to submit. I needed a job. I needed to keep myself busy. I needed the money. Um, so literally, I had a bursary for three years for my PhD, and then in my last year, I had no bursary. So it was really really tough. Um, Financially, so I needed a job to pay off the balance of my um, university fees, so that I could graduate. You know, um, yeah. And then I left. I left the company after five months because of a toxic manager. Maybe I'll do another video on that next. Um, I'm not gonna say what company that was, but yeah. Um, and then I actually took a temp position. But I was that desperate, I was, I was that, not, de well, not desperate, but I was that hungry for experience. So I took a temp uh, job for about six months and it was completely out of my field. It was in human resources and I was a resourcing coordinator. And it was quite exciting, I must say. Meeting different people all the time um, was quite challenging because I'm naturally an introvert, so to meet people on a daily basis was out of my comfort zone but I enjoyed it because it pushed me to learn more about myself that I wouldn't have if I didn't take that position on. And so with the medical uh, sales rep position as well, I, um, I did have to interact with people daily and that was for me quite challenging in the beginning. But you do get used to it, you do push yourself outside your comfort zone, you do learn, you do grow and that is what is so important is that, you know, the growth that comes with experience, it doesn't matter where you start, but it's the experience um, that counts the most, I would say. Yeah, so after speaking to a bunch of people, taking on these different kinds of jobs and roles, I um, came across, well actually, somebody put forward my name for a, um, a data science graduate program that was going to be the first of its kind and so basically I applied for that and yeah the rest is history and I'm here where I am right now. It was a process though, um, we had interviews, we had to present um, a little like mini project kind of thing where we had to like problem solve and that sort of thing. So if you are thinking about going into data science I would suggest you do an online course because, let me tell you now, it's the combination of three different fields. So it's very math intensive. It's computer science intensive and it's, you need to know about the business that you're in. So if you have a combination of all three, it's like kind of like a jack of all trades, but not a master of none. It's a master of all three. Then you've nailed data science. Um, well, you're on your way to becoming a data scientist because literally if you know those three things very well and you can combine them in such a way to answer business problems using data science tools, then you are definitely, definitely on the right track. Um, so yeah, that's what excites me about data science um, and there are definitely parallels between doing research or scientific research and data science. And I was thinking about it yesterday. And, for example, they both um, consist of answering questions, but the toolkits are different. So obviously in scientific research, your tools are the experiments and the equipment that you use in the lab, and your toolkit or your toolbox in data science is basically all the algorithms that are available to you, and the algorithms that you can tweak and create. Now, that is, where, that is where the real data science work is, um, because data science engineers, or data engineers, is it data engineers? I'm not exactly sure. But those people just literally build predictive models and run them. That's all. The real data science work comes in when you have to create an algorithm or build one. And I am not there yet. I'm still in training, um, but I am working on that point. Um, it is a lot of hard work. So our, our graduate program 
is quite intense because we have to do full-time work and we have to study. So it is a very, very intense for us right now. I would suggest, um, you know, just doing some research on it. Just look it up, do some research, find out what it really is like to be a data scientist. Find out if, if that's what you want to do every day of your life, then that is the route to go. It's very, up, it's very like, it's an emerging field, so it's very new, it's very exciting. There, there, there's publications, new things published every day. So um, it's just, it's very, it's a very sexy topic right now. Uh, it's, it's being voted, I think, one of the sexiest jobs of 2019 or 21st century. I'm not even sure, but what I can tell you is that it's not easy. It's not easy. But if you are willing to learn, and if you, you need to be willing to learn, and you also need to have an aptitude for maths. Uh, if you have those two things, then I think that you're ready to go. And you have to be curious, of course. Um, yeah, it's all about answering the question. Um, yeah. Using historical data, and the data that you have is not always clean, it's not always structured. So working around that is quite, um, it takes about 90% of your time. Um, yeah, so that's all I have to say basically of how I made the transition from biochemistry to data science. And if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask and I'll make a YouTube video on it. And um, yeah, maybe I'll make coffee with Kush a real thing. And then, you know, who knows? So yeah, I guess I will see you in my next one. I love you all. Have an awesome day. Bye.